Hi. In this first video, I'm going to be going over a bunch of the parts that uh, it's going to take to build your horns, and a little bit on how to how to cut them or how to put them together. But it's mainly to go over the parts themselves, so you can get a better visual of what I'm talking about in the book. Uh, the first part I'll talk about here is in the book. I call this the power chamber. This is your largest PVC part, which is a three inch down to two inch reducer. So then you take a two inch down to one and a half inch reducer bushing and that will be glued into the front of that. Uh, these bushings can come in different styles. Uh, this particular one I've already glued up is a different style. It's more of a flush mount type reducer bushing that sits in there. Um, a lot of them have this hexagon style head on them also, but it doesn't matter. Whatever you can find is fine. Two inch down to one and a half. And then you're going to need a one and a half inch down to three quarter inch reducer bushing. And that will glue into the front of that. And actually you're going to need two of these, but the first one will go in the front. This is the one in the book I show reaming out the ring. Uh, they'll have a little stopper ring in the back and that's to prevent the pipe from going all the way through. But we want the pipe to go all the way through, so we're going to get rid of that ring. And uh, Usually uh, the easiest way that I've found is just to take a Dremel tool with a cutting head or something and grind that out. Uh, I tell in the book, you know, you could use a file, a round file. It would take a really long time to do it that way, but, you know, it would be possible. But and a Dremel tool will save you a lot of time and effort and make it a lot easier. Um, one important thing there is you only want to get rid of that ring. I'll show it from this side, maybe you can see it better. Get rid of that ring, grind that right out. If you go a little oversized large round hole, that's fine back here. But we don't want to disturb this inner bore. The nice smooth part, just leave that alone. Um, main reason, because we want our pipe that's going to slide all the way through this to have a nice snug fit on that inner bore that's uh, factory made. So you're going to just be getting rid of that ring, leave the bore alone, don't mess with it at all. Nice tight fit for airtight. Um, so anyway, this uh, the one that you reamed out is going to get glued into the front of that and that's pretty much all our parts on that end of it. Uh, the next thing you're going to be doing is you're going to need to cut your spacer ring and your tightening ring that goes in the back. You'll be cutting that from a 3 inch pipe. This 3 inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. And this is where you're going to need the miter saw. Uh, absolute must to have the miter saw because you're going to need a perfect 90 degree cut, nice and straight, absolutely perfectly straight. Um, because you're going to use this as a spacer ring on the inside. I have this one glued in already. So you got a spacer ring in there and that has to be perfectly flush inside. That's what the diaphragm is going to lay on. And that has to be, everything has to be straight inside. So we got that. Uh, this three quarter inch one, we're going to glue that all the way into the front. You're going to want to just put glue on the inside of the power chamber right about in this area right here. Take some of your PVC glue, put it inside there before you put the ring in. And uh, don't put any glue on the ring itself. That way, you know, you won't have glue getting smeared all the way down the side of the power chamber. And uh, you'll tap that down in. What I do, I make a wood block that fits just perfect inside there. And uh, that way I can take a rubber mallet or hammer Tap that right down in there nice and snug. You want the, you want that uh, spacer ring to go all the way right to the front where it starts to taper there. All the way up against that. Um, you don't have to get crazy, you know, just hammering it too hard, but you do want it all the way to the front. You want it absolutely perfectly straight in there. So we got that in there. Now you're going to have a second um, reducer bushing, the back one, with your pipe. And that one 
you don't necessarily have to glue this onto the pipe. If you find that it's vibrating off when you're blowing the horn, then um, you could glue it on, but I haven't really found that they come loose. If you tap them on good and tight, they pretty much just stay there. So uh, I wouldn't, I'd say don't bother gluing it on. This part with your pipe, and in the book I show you starting out with a one foot long pipe. I've already cut this one back once already, but that's gonna slide in there. It's gonna go through your front reducer bushing that you've bored out, slide all the way through, and come out the front. So once you have this all the way in, I don't have this all bored out for you, but once you have that all the way in, then you're gonna take what I call craft foam. It's arts and crafts foam rubber. Uh, kids use it for arts and crafts projects at school. It comes in various colors, various thicknesses. It's just a real spongy rubber type foam, foam type product. Uh, it really works nice for, for making these rings, these gaskets. <clears throat> like I show in the book, take one of these uh, spacer rings, or your tightening ring, <clears throat> trace on the inside, trace on the outside with a marker or a pencil, and then cut them out and make a couple of those for each power chamber that you're going to build. And these are going to fit, one will fit against the front spacer ring, and then you'll be putting uh, polycarbonate diaphragm in and then you put another foam uh, gasket on the back side and then finally you'll have your one inch um, tightening ring and that tightening ring will go up against that whole stack and you'll compress that right down so I'll get back to that in a second um, your polycarbonate that I was talking about for your diaphragm you're only going to need one for every three inch power chamber that you build. <clears throat> and see if we can get a good shot of that. It's 0 0.093 inches thick, polycarbonate. Um, a lot of places call it plexiglass. But this is a polycarbonate material. And the reason I specify that is because there's also an acrylic plexiglass. Acrylic is a lot softer, not near as hard as uh, the polycarbonate and it doesn't work as well. I've tried the acrylic and it's not as good. So be sure to use the uh, polycarbonate. Uh, it's a little harder to find probably than the acrylic, but the polycarbonate is definitely the way to go. Um, I get asked a lot of times, how do I make such a nice perfect circle out of my polycarbonate? I just use a jigsaw. Um, jigsaw with a fine tooth blade seems to work about the best for cutting these. Just go nice and slow. Take your time. I actually cut them just slightly oversized and then uh, sand them down, just sand them nice and round. So you end up with a nice little round disc. So, anyway, we got our gasket in there. Put our, and I, the polycarbonate, when I cut them, make sure that they aren't binding real tight against the outside edge of your power chamber. It should fit, you know fairly close to the edge. You shouldn't be have a big gap or anything there. But it should also at the same time not be bound up and uh, you know really having to force it to go in there. It should just drop right in and drop right out real easy. Got that in there. Now we would have already put our pipe and rear reducer. That'd already be inside there. Um, so now we got our second gasket. That'll go on the back side of the diaphragm. And then we've got our one inch tightening ring. We're gonna put that tightening ring on there. And I take wood clamps. Uh, in the book you'll see the wood clamps. I got them squeezed down. Don't be afraid to squash this down. I mean, I really put a lot of attention on there. I really squash them down tight. Um, you're not gonna hurt the diaphragm at all. You want the foam in the back smashed right down tight against it so it can't move. Uh, when you put air in it, it won't blow the gasket out. You know, you want to really squash down tight. And uh, once you get to that point, you got it all 
all squeezed down nice and tight, then you're going to be drilling holes through the side of it. This one here is a different chamber. Um, you can see the holes through the tightening ring. So you'll be smashing that all down nice and tight. Once you got it squeezed down tight, held in place, you're going to drill holes through it. I take just a drill with a slightly smaller bit than my screws. These are just flat head or a round head, I should say, machine screws. I think they're half inch long. And I make the hole just slightly smaller. That way, when I start these screws in, they just kind of cut their own thread in. Uh, take a screwdriver, screw them right through the hole, and that'll hold it in place. I usually do four, uh, two across from each other, and two across from each other like that. Um, and that'll hold that back ring in easily, no problem. Um, another part here is your brass barbed nipple, like that. The one I'm using says 3 8 inch hose by 1 quarter inch NPT. That's the size I'm using. Um, you don't have to use that size. It's just, you know, this is what I'm finding in the store and it's easy to use. Um, gives you a, a decent size hose to work with. This is a manifold that I built with the barbed nipples on the manifold part that's going to air the individual horns. This one's set up for three horns. Um, yeah, just clear plastic holes like this, that's all you're hooking on. So, that's just going to go in the hole that you drill. And in the book, I show you drilling the hole right up here in the tapered area. And it works really nice. Um, I use a wood bit. Personally, I like the wood bit. This is a half inch wood bit. A half inch wood bit just works absolutely perfect with that size barbed nipple. Um, whatever size you use, be sure that the hole that you drill is just slightly smaller than the, than the threads on your brass. So that way, after you've drilled your hole, it's a nice snug fit. And that'll take a little bit of you know, pressure to get it down in there and get it started. Once you get it started threading in, take an end wrench, you know, and you probably have to, you should have to use a wrench to actually get that to screw all the way down in. Uh, if you can just do it with your fingers, you know you've drilled a hole just a little bit too big. So you're going to have to make sure that you do it tight enough so that you need to use a wrench to tighten that down all the way in. Um, one thing I like to do uh, to be sure I'm not going to mess up my reducer is to take a piece of scrap 2x4 or whatever, uh, drill my hole through a scrap piece of 2x4, thread this into the 2x4 and make sure I have a nice tight fit before I go and put the hole in there. That way you know you aren't going to ruin your PVC. Because I know uh, a lot of you guys have a real hard time finding some of these parts, so you don't want to ruin parts if you don't have to. Even though they aren't terribly expensive, it's just a pain to go, go find them. Um, I'm going to get back to the rear reducer now. Um, oh, find my other one. Um, in the book, I show you my, my rear reducer, and the front one is the exact same thing. I show how mine have this cupped area, and we, you'll need to have this raised rim with a cupped area like this because this raised rim is all that should be touching your diaphragms. Um, when your diaphragm is laying on top of there, it's going to be like that. And it just needs a rim to rest on. You don't want a flat surface. Now there's another style like this that I found that's completely flat across the back. And chances are your horn isn't going to work at all with that much flat surface, surface area. You need just a little skinny rim like that. Um, if all you can find is this flat style, still not a problem. Um, I take a one and a half inch coupling like this. Just cut a piece off the top, you know, about three quarter inch wide piece. And that will slide right over top of that. I'll put it on this way. Um, the side that you want out facing out 
that's going to go up against the diaphragms is the side that's molded, you know, that you didn't cut. This is the cut side. I want that to go on the inside. I want the nice flat molded surface to be on the outside. And if for some reason that the molded, sorry, molded surface has lettering on it, sometimes they'll have lettering on the back side. Just take a piece of sandpaper, lay it on a flat surface, kind of roll it around a couple times to grind the letters off it so you get a nice smooth surface because this has to be nice and smooth and actually kind of airtight because uh, diaphragm is supposed to be nice and tight against it and not leak any air. The only time it's supposed to leak air is when you get so much pressure inside that it starts to flex the plastic and, and let air go past it. So that's pretty much all the parts on that. Um, next part I'll talk about here is the manifold that I built. And this is just half inch PVC pipe, Schedule 40. You can use three quarter inch PVC pipe since you've already got three quarter. Um, if you want to use three quarter inch pipe, that's fine. Um, end cap, this is just a glue on end, end cap that you put on to stop air from going out that end, of course. Um, this end is a threaded female end. It has threads on the inside, half inch. And you can take any um, steel pipe, half inch steel pipe threaded and thread right into there for your air source. Um, they also make them in male end if you want that. Uh, need a male end that's threaded. They just glue right on. Um, then I drill holes, same as I did with my power chamber. Drill a hole just slightly smaller than the nipple and screw it in with a wrench. I put a little bit of silicone on there because with a round pipe it's kind of hard to get a nice tight air airtight fit. So I put a little silicone on there to really seal them up good. Um, this is just plastic tubing, nothing special, nothing high pressure. Um, basically your horns, even though you're putting about 100 PSI into this pipe, um, when you open the valve, it's really never holding back 100 pounds of pressure because the horns will start blowing at about 30 to 40 PSI. So once the horns start blowing, you'll be maintaining 30 to 40 PSI through this hose almost the whole time. It might be slightly higher, but uh, it's not really holding back pressure, you know, that much uh, pressure because the horns are releasing air at the same time. So that's pretty much it. Uh, of course, you'll probably have slightly longer hoses than this. This is just kind of a test rig I used to uh, just test one that I built. The last part that I'll talk about here in this video is the funnel. And that's the end that will go on the pipe. I'll show you one that's finished off. These are painted out nice. Actually, this is a part of the set that's on the cover of the book. Um, in that funnel, you'll cut off the end. Show you the end here. This is what it looks like before you cut anything off. You'll be cutting that end off just so it'll slide over top of the pipe. You want a super nice tight fit on there. You don't want it loose at all, or this pipe will just, or the funnel will just blow right off. So a nice tight fit. Um, I cut it, and then usually I kind of sand it back a little at a time on a belt sander to get just the right fit. But these funnels are called transmission filler funnels. Um, this particular one is Blitz Company, B-L-I-T-Z. Now I see they've got a different sticker over, it says Blitz molded into the plastic underneath the sticker. Now they're called Rhino Gear. So they've probably changed companies, changed hands, I don't know what happened there, but anyway it says Blitz underneath there still, but whatever, this is a transmission filler funnel. Um, most auto parts stores you can find this type of thing or a you know, farm store or something like that. You can find this type of funnel. Plastic, cheap. Uh, this one was $1.69. And uh, yeah, easy to work with. Um, on the funnels, you'll be cutting, cutting the back end off to start with, but then 
when you're going for the higher notes, you'll actually be cutting the large end off also. So that large end will get cut way back. And that'll give you a higher note. I'll get into more of that later, but if you see the shorter funnels and wonder why, why some of them are so short, that's why, to get the higher notes. <clears throat> One more thing on the airlines. And I'll talk more about this also um, in one of the other videos that I'm going to be making. But I like to put a restrictor in just before the power chamber. Um, you want a fairly large airline, at least half inch up to your manifold. So I got a half inch manifold. I should have half inch line all the way up to that from my tanks directly because you want huge air volume. Then we can start reducing it down to, you know, slightly smaller lines like this until we get up to our power chamber. But um, I like to restrict the air even more right at the power chamber down to about an eighth inch hole. And uh, about an eighth inch is plenty big enough um, to give you a, a nice amount of air. And this is just a wire connector, yellow wire connector, spade connector. And that fits nicely inside the line there. And then when I put it on my brass nipple, it makes it fit super, super tight too. But anyway. Yeah. Anyway, when it goes on there, that's holding back, you know, quite a bit of air. So you don't get this giant surge of air into the chamber all at once. It kind of meters the air a little bit, slows it down just a little bit. And you're still going to get plenty of air with just that, that amount right there going into one chamber. But you do need a, a very large volume of air. I'll talk about that later because most people don't understand volume of air and, and how much uh, air these horns actually need to run. Uh, the volume of air is much more important than the PSI per se. Uh, they'll run easily on 60 PSI, but they need large volumes of air to run. So anyway, I'll 